The Republican National Convention wrapping up tonight with the expected acceptance speech by President Donald Trump and joining us to talk about the GOP convention. Dr. Rafe Sonnenshine, the executive director of the Pat Brown Institute for Public Affairs at Cal State LA. Dr. Sonnenshine, thank you very much for joining us. The convention is underway right now. We're seeing protests across the country, sports boycotts and the like following the police shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Are you seeing a, a, a response from convention speakers? Are they able to respond? A lot of these things are pre-recorded. No, but I think that these events, these tragic, devastating events, overshadow this convention completely and have redrawn the whole narrative that they're trying to create, uh, which is kind of an alternate narrative that the virus is gone and the economy is doing fine, but that there's a lot of disorder and it's mostly due to protesters acting badly. And yet the event itself has quite the opposite effect. And I think because much of the events of the speeches were taped in advance and even more, I don't think they know quite what to say. I don't think they know what to say, and especially when a Trump supporter has been arrested uh, and charged with the murder of uh, two protesters. So I think they're going to be closely watched tonight, but I have no idea how they're going to get themselves out of the box that to some degree they put themselves in. Mm -hmm. So so what do you expect President Trump's message to be tonight? Do you think he will he might change his message in light of all this unrest? He rarely changes his message. I, I think he is very consistent that he believes that the disorder is caused by the protesters and that uh, he's going to draw a line in support of the police. I think he will avoid addressing whether any statements he or his allies have made have encouraged violence uh, from uh, so-called militia people. I don't think they'll go near that even remotely, but I think it'll be very much on everybody's mind. I think he will try to keep some of the themes of the convention going about how he's a kind of a warm-hearted person. And one of them that's going to be very hard to maintain is that they highlighted a lot of African-American men at the convention. But right now, the most important conventions in the country are being conducted by professional sports teams hmm. who are people at the top of their profession who are risking their own careers in effect in order to make a statement. So I think everything's just been thrown out of whack for their planning, and we'll see what they come up with. Add to that that it's virtual, and then you, that's another dimension. But if, if mm -hmm. the goal here is to try to convince undecided vo voters, first of all, do you think that is part of the goal here, or is it really just to shore up the base? And do you think the convention is, is accomplishing that? Well, it appears the logic has been all along to create kind of a base of white supporters who will feel comfortable voting for Donald Trump. And that's why they had so many of these kind of so-called humanizing things, which is, you know, a little bit like who are you going to believe or what you've seen the last few years or just what you hear during the convention. I'm not convinced it's going to work and I've seen it work a million times in my whole life and I think this is one year it may not work and I think in a way his biggest enemy is the real world right now. The virus, the economy and police shootings and people's understanding of the violence and at a certain point even someone who can bend reality as much as Donald Trump I think may find these realities really too hard to bend. Mm, okay, Dr. Rafe Sun and Shine, Executive Director of the Pat Brown Institute for Public Affairs at Cal State Los Angeles. Thanks again for joining us and for your perspective. All My right. pleasure. And uh, watch ABC News coverage of this final night of the Republican National Convention beginning at 7 p.m. here on ABC7. We'll also have updates and the latest information on our free ABC7 Los Angeles app.